Today we are going to be doing a completely fresh playthrough of Darkest Dungeon. Uh, several of my friends are interested in the game and they wanted me to show them some of the ropes. Uh, I've been through once completely and I've done a few other playthroughs almost to the end. So we're going to take it for a go. We're going to do Darkest uh, and we're going to rename Let's get in there. Let me mess with my sounds, make sure everything's at good levels. That should be good. All right. So, for anyone who is not familiar with Darkest Dungeon, it's all about minimizing risk and maximizing small victories. So, it's a turn-based game that's all about positional strategy and all about knowing when to bail out of dungeons and knowing when not to press your luck. So, Let's go ahead and skip all this tutorial nonsense. So, Dismas, or Dismas, is our highwayman. He's got a lot of bleeds and ranged attacks. He's usually good in the second slot or third slot. He doesn't do as much upfront damage, but he bleeds. And then, Renald is our crusader. He's a lot of upfront damage, healing, and light generation. So, all of the characters in this game have some sort of like auxiliary benefits that come with their class so like all the holy characters usually have light generation abilities a lot of the scoundrel based characters have bleed or blight based abilities or positional movement right so it creates a different abilities uh, beyond just straight damage in combat. So one of the other key components of a game like this is that you can only carry so much, so the more prepared you are for a fight with items, the less ability you have. Let's stun this guy so he doesn't get an attack. Um, the less room you have to actually hurt people or carry treasure, so you have to kind of balance uh, being prepared for fights and being able to bring in loot, which is one of the things that I like most. The other thing that I like about this is is it's about turn and initiative management. So stuns are often worth a lot of weight in this game because if you can prevent someone from taking a turn, it can be better than doing damage, especially if it's somebody like this who affects everyone at once. But we're going to keep stacking bleeds on him and get him down. So... But yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Alright. So the other thing about this game, which anybody who's watching who's played before would know, uh, is, is a lot of the enemies focus specifically on knocking you out of position. Because when you're knocked out of position, if you've optimized your characters for certain moves that require you to be in certain positions, if the monsters move you around, you can't do those moves and you have to waste a turn moving back into position. So, unless, hopefully no one is surprised to know that this game is really, really hard. And the whole premise is, is it's supposed to challenge you into really being able to assess every action that you take. Obviously we're in the tutorial. So, that's not as much of an issue. But feel free to ask me any questions in the chat. I have uh, links to both my page for this and also my other channel where I do Netrunner content. Let's take a look. Bandage trap chest. Oh, it's trapped. Oh no, we're blighted. Okay, we're gonna go back to town. It doesn't matter. Right. So we got these heirlooms. So, a good way to think of this game is, is you need money to upgrade your people and you need heirlooms to upgrade your town. 
Um, so it makes it so that you can't just get money. You need to like complete quests because you need the heirlooms to be able to upgrade your town so that you can get your people to the next level of training. Usually when people level up, they get positive and negative traits. So my Dismas got a lovely trait that he has got minus five dodge because he's clumsy, but he got plus five accuracy because he is a natural swing. And then Renault leveled up and got neither a negative nor a positive. Welcome home, such as it is. Such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands. So let's take a look at the town. So, it's pretty basic. You can go in here and review any of the cutscenes you've already seen. Um, you can go here. This is where you recruit new people. I'll come back to that in just one second. Uh, we don't have the whole town unlocked because we haven't even done the first actual quest. And this is your graveyard where lots of people will end up. One of the things about Darkest Dungeon is, is it has a persistent autosave. So whenever somebody dies, they're gone. Most will end up here. Covered in the poisoned earth. All right. Awaiting merciful oblivion. So, let's see. So, this is your stagecoach. This is your lifeblood in the early game. It starts with a base of giving you two new heroes. They don't cost anything to recruit. You're usually going to take everyone you can. Normally, you would look at what kind of negative traits and positive traits they had. But this early in the game, it doesn't matter how awful they are, we're taking them. Um, and then we really want to focus on upgate, updating the amount of people that we get from the stagecoats. So we don't need to update the roster just yet. Um, can we, what's the exchange rate to get the last paper that we need? Um, all right, so let's get rid of three busts to get two papers so we can get the next level of stagecoat. So this means the next time we come back from a quest, there's going to be four heroes instead of two for us to recruit from. So that's pretty good. So now we've got a team. Let's get on top of it. Yep. Let's, yeah, I don't need the tool tips. Thanks. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So we're going to keep Ronald in the front. He's a kleptomaniac. That's rad. Uh, he's God-fearing, so that means he can only pray to feel better, and he's a warrior of light, which is good for us. What a dismal. He's got known cheat, so he can't gamble. Natural swing, quick reflexes, and hard noggin. And Hubert, what do we got? Actually, I'm going to start renaming everybody. Who do we have watching? Anybody wants to chime in, I'll re- uh, in the chat, I'll rename a character after you. We got the usual suspects here. Oh, I am all over this menu. Uh, after, at the next stream, I'll be in the... I'll have chroma key, so I'll just fit in the bottom corner here. Um, but until then, it's not super, super the best. All right. I should name one cuddle. All right, we're going to name our... Plague Doctor Cuddle. So we got Cuddle. And then next person will go. All right, so provisioning. Um, on these early the er, early measured now in gold. Um, quests, Plague you're going to... The basic rule of thumb is, is if it's a short quest, you want one shovel to clear walls. You want um, six... Food, I'm sorry, seven food is what I usually do, and seven torches. Okay, and that'll get you through. And then you increase those increments by one for medium and by two for long. So then if it's a long, you're going to have three shovels, 21 and 21. Another loyal devotee. Oh, who did we have just join us? Cuttlefish, thank you for the follow. All right, so let's go ahead and embark. So, we get the Holy Water because we've got Renault in the party, and we have the Anti-Venom because we have the Witch Doctor in the party. I haven't put, purchased much food or water. We're doing a short one, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with my gut. Let's go. It is recommended that you take at least food for eight food for this quest. 
Okay, well, we'll take the extra food, because apparently they've updated the tooltips since the last time I played. Sure. So, every location in this dungeon has a specific type, in the town has a specific type of monster. The ruins is a lot of undead and skeletons. Normally, I wouldn't bring someone like Renault in here, because bleeds don't do a lot in this dungeon, because most things don't have meat on their bones. Uh, Renault or any holy, like the Vestel, or Renault are really good in here. The Plague Doctor is here, good here, because the Plague Doctor has Blight good old cuddle. So let's pick a destination on the map. We have to explore 90% of these rooms. Alright. So, as I'm walking, you can see the light goes down. The lower the light is, the higher the stress damage that my party will take from this adventure. So, you really don't want the light to go down if you can avoid it. So we're going to maintain the light right when it gets below the line. We put it back up. All right, so we got our a fight. They're surprised. So that means we're going to get an action round before they do. Uh, we can't really use his bleed because it's not going to do crap here. So we're going to do a direct damage bolt to the guy in the back because he's one of the few people who can affect the people in the back. We're going to get the incision in there. There's a miss. Just burn him. Perfect. Uh, Renal does extra damage against undead targets. Let's get a judgment in there. So this is like we're still in the tutorial here So this is pretty light stuff. The game gets very hard very fast Unlock strong bags. So let's get in there So a lot of these can be trapped. So if somebody has high stress like you'll notice right here Cuddle already has uh, 20 out of 200 stress So if somebody's starting to get stressed, you don't want them to open boxes because if they're booby-trapped they're going to um, get pissed off and maybe go insane and cause the rest of your party to go insane. Oh, so there's a stress stick. Even so we're going to use the shovel seems to get through that. Passage. And the torch just went down right as we got into this fight. All right, so let's get the play grenade on him. So that'll do damage over time. I did that first because... These cultist acolytes have a high initiative, so I knew that they were going to act next. And look at that counterattack. 20 stress right on to Cuddle. Um, let's keep hammering away. Uh, let's get the grape shot in there. Good. So the back line in this game usually focuses on doing stress damage. So you really want to take, take them out first and make sure you always have a at least two characters that can hit the back line. Otherwise, they will just chew your characters up with stress. Give them no quarter. So that fight's done. And we got a Houndmaster Whistle. We don't have any Houndmasters yet, but that's okay. Hopefully you are all still able to hear the narrator. Let me know if you can't, because the narrator is like really clutch in this game. do that because the narrator is like half the reason why you play this game all right so let's go north all right so please don't steal yep and since he has kleptomaniac he stole the treasure and we didn't get it Thank you, Renault. You're my hero. Alright. So let's go ahead and hit the torch. Um, we really want her to die first. So let's get dangerous with that. stress damage so one of the interesting things about this game also though is, is you're not watching me make any of the mistakes that I made early in this game or in my first few playthroughs like being like oh this beefy guy I gotta focus on him first 
Meanwhile, while the back line chews on me without doing damage, but just shredding my stress so I can't stay in the dungeon long enough to complete the mission. This expedition at least so, this heirloom chest could use the key that Renald stole, but we don't have it. So now we're going to get what was in there, but it's going to be a lesser version of what we would have gotten if we still had the key. And I wasn't paying attention and walked over a trap, so our Vestral gets a ton of stress. Empty room. And now, some of these early dungeons, you really don't want empty rooms. Um, just because they don't give you as much treasure. Alright, so there's a trap. So this time we're actually going to have him disarm it, which means he's good to go. So, keeping on top of our light management, we're going to go into this room because we want the curio. Alright, so we want that ranged guy to go down first. He's in the back row. He's going to be hurting us. Nicely done. Because watch. That's a pretty significant amount of damage for this early in the game. Let's put a DOT on him. Yep, resisted it. Rad. So already, I, I'm going into a room that I didn't have to go into because I wanted extra treasure. And I'm kind of being punished for it. See if I can finish both of them. Perfect. Alright. Uh, let's do the big heal on him. We get the max value. That's pretty rad. You'll notice that my heals are significantly lower than the amounts of damage that are being thrown around. Oh, a torch back. That's actually pretty rad. Alright, so we want the Plague Doctor to do the Holy Fountain. Because there's a chance... So he gets fully healed and loses a ton of stress because we put the holy water from Renald on there. Value. So now we're going to lose less torch going back through this lighter hallway that we've already gone through. Wow, a lot of food, that's good. We're getting, I mean, again, first dungeon. So, hunger is going to come up. If you don't have food when the hunger check comes up, bad things happen to you. So, it punishes you for taking a long time in dungeon and checking more rooms than you need to. Again, minimizing the amount that you can grind for power in this game. Okay, so we're going to continue adventuring. Is there a curio or anything? Oh no, there's one more room that we haven't been into, which has stuff in it. So, we could leave, but we're not in bad shape, so we're going to press our luck and get that chest. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. Alright, so they're surprised. That's exciting. Let's do this. All right, so now we actually get to do the play grenade on multiple people. We get the blight hit on both of them. That's really rad. I'm going to err on the side of healing here. Let's get some group damage going. Yep. Very glad that I did that heal. He's probably going to attack the same... Oh, he doesn't attack the same person. One of the other things in this game that you'll learn very quickly is that the AI is really, really smart. And they will attack the same person. And they will kick people while they're down. If someone on your team is close to having like a stress heart attack, they will just pound and dogpile on that character to make it so that 
you get that psychological break, which means that the character will cause the other people on the team to break as well. Let's do the party one. Nope, no crits. Okay. We don't need crits. It's okay. So now we're extra done. We've got an heirloom chest. We've got a key this time. Let's get that. So now we end it. So let's take a look at our wrap up. We got some good stuff here. So let's see what our traits are. Sickly, that's not a good one. Warren's Adventurer, that's a really good one. Minus 20% stress in the Warrens. Curious, obsessed with the acquisition of knowledge. So these ones that don't say anything specific means that it's just gonna come up weirdly. So like they might interact with curios or items that you don't want them to. They might open things or interact with NPCs in ways that you don't anticipate. Unholy, that's pretty good. Kind of weird for a um, Plague Doctor, but whatever. And then Calm, minus 15 damage on the first round. So this is actually very lucky because I'm rarely going to be doing damage with this character. So that's not a huge issue. So let's return to town. So the reason I wanted to upgrade, I yep, severe negative courts, I will go over all that myself. So the reason I wanted to they found me. update the stagecoach is because I want to put every single one of these people in the fridge to either remove negative traits or remove stress from them so that we can have them fresh. The neck, not this one, but the next one. So we need to be able to create a new team to be able to do that. So let's go to the stress relief. The cobwebs have been dusted. The because she, straight. Can you not go there? What's the your Abbey issue? You're a gambler. In town, will only gamble. So that's not great. Um, let's get you to the inn. Fresh kegs. And of course, somebody's in the gambling hall. So she can't rest. Actually, before we put anybody in, let me actually be smart and see who's in there. Because if we don't even have a healer in there, we can't do it. All right, so we get... Durville, mighty sword arm anchored by holy purpose. Belvedere and Tessel. Egomania. Obsessed with cleanliness, Cove Adventure, Natural Swing's a good one. Para Normal Normania and Eagle Eye, that's pretty good. Resolution. Oh, that's not that bad. And what do you got? Thin Blooded and Known Sheet. Okay. It's not terrible. Okay. Um can we update the stagecoach anymore? No, but we can update our barracks, which we're Great definitely going to do. Um, okay, one, so we can't actually rest our healer, and that's kind of bad. Um, so I guess we're going to have to just put... We can't do the sanitarium yet. Um, right. Um, so this guy is really powerful, but you can't put him in with anybody else. Uh, who's holy, so people don't like him uh, at all. So that's really problematic because we only have two holy healers right now. Um, we didn't get a witch doctor on this pool. So our trinkets are a houndmaster trinket and a disease charm. Well, let's see what kind of team we can pull together. So, uh, medium, we don't want to do a medium yet. Short one. Man at arms, we don't have a man at arms. What's this one for? Blood charm, that's pretty good for certain boss fights. Uh, critical dice, that's pretty good, but it's a medium. Um, I really don't want to take her. Um, let's do a short. What abilities do you have? You got the stress one. Okay, we could do this because he actually ha has started with the Stress Relieve Banjo. So let's do th that one. And let's get him. Where does he want to be? He wants to be there. So let's get him. Let's get Osmond back in there. We're going to take Renald and Dismas out for now. Um, 
Uh, we can't put uh, that guy in there. But we can get that guy in there. Let's put the disease resist charm on him. Um, and then let's go back to town now that we have our party picked. And let's look at stress relief. And let's get him. Let's get Cuddle into some stress relief. Yep. All right. So let's do this. Let's provision this party. So now we have firewood because we're going to probably want to make camp at some point, which will engage a bunch of other abilities that we have. Uh, we're going to want two shovels, and we're going to want to want 16 food. And then we should be good to go. I like to go super inventory light in this game because I like to maximize my profits. It's super dangerous. I have a lot more deaths than a lot of other people who play this game, but it works for me. Pace out the halls of your lineage once familiar. Now, Oren. So there's a secret room that got revealed. So we have to explore 90% of rooms. We're not going to go this way because this has an obstacle in it. So we're just going to call this room dead because that's a waste of a shovel that doesn't lead to a room with treasure. An altar of light. Let's put some holy light on. Actually, actually, we're not going to put anything on there. There we go. We're going to give him a buff. All right. We got ourselves a big old convoy. The light, the promise of safety. All right, so there's a trap right here. We're gonna give uh, her the opportunity to dismantle it. So, so I was gonna say so Watch she has a chance step. to relieve some stress, but that did not work out. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. So the secret rooms here. If only treasure could staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption. Strange that we haven't hit anyone yet. So we're already in a dangerous mode with our Vestal Osman being like super pissed off already. So that's not great. Hopefully we can get into a fight so the Jester can actually use his ability to help her by playing a song that relieves her stress even though we're in a dungeon as the light gains purchase spirits are lifted and purpose is made clear all right so we got to fight these guys are the worst bone courtiers are the worst watch what happens when he attacks oh no only three damage 19 stress and they have really high really high initiative so the jester does some great buffs and but the primary thing that jester does is stress relief all right oh this guy's got his heal version so we're gonna stun the guy that hasn't attacked yet and save ourselves that damage now we're gonna get a bleed on this guy And then we're going to get Judgment on the Bone Courier. Because I made a team that has a harder time attacking the back line. Like I said, you shouldn't do. Uh, let's get out of Stress Heal on him. Yep, Tempt That Goblet. Let's do it. When successes happen, they have a chance to recover stress as well, which is really handy. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Yep, come at me, bro. 
Thank you for moving to the front. We are easier for Durville to hit. The way is lit. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. So we're getting some scouting action. So we basically want to map out. I think in this size map we can miss two rooms. So we're going to go down, hit here, go up, and then sweep around and do everything. So we're going to go down instead of across. Stack of books. An old journal entry. Day six as we try. Well, Okay, so this time... Ah, oh, she did disarm it this time, so she got some stress relief. Hey, anybody who wants to be a character in this game, just feel free to either chime in on the chat or uh, follow. Ugh, what a hit. Um, so let's get some... Let's get some shots on those stress damagers. Uh... Yeah, get you out of here, please. We can't really have you around. Now, the thing is, is we've been getting very fortunate, knock on wood, that we haven't been getting slammed with tons of crits, because usually the RNG in this game is very punishing with crits, and a single crit can really... Uh, you know, knock you out of alignment and like change your math on how safe you are. All right, so we're not gonna do a bleed because it's not really gonna do anything. There it is. Yep, there's the cascading stress damage that comes from it. Yeah, this guy's gonna need a big heal. Not what I wanted. Thank you. All right, so. That's good. I'll take that. He might die here. It's gonna be close. Especially since it's going to tick down once before the next time we, um, I get to heal him. Not great. Trying to clear those bodies. So we already may lose a character here. Yep. Oh, we passed the check so he doesn't die this hit. Heal him. Thank you. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Momentum. Push on to the task's end. So we might want to do camp soon, is what I was going to say. Um, Iron Maiden, how about guy with lowest health not open that? Yep, so he's got claustrophobia now. Um, after this next room, we're gonna camp. Yeah, so let's camp. All right. Together, so and vulnerable. Rats we're gonna do a feast. Give us ourselves some stress back. And then 
the Jester is going to do minus 50. No, we, we don't want to do his. We're going to prevent the nighttime ambush. We're going to have him bandage Renald. We'll have him bandage him. Or not Renald. Desmond. And then let's rest. In Radiance, may we find victory. Absolutely, in Radiance, may we find some of that victory. So there's a courier in there, so it might be worth actually hitting that room. Let's do it. So we have no big rests now, though. We get no more... So I'm trying to make sure that at least one of the stress characters doesn't act. Be gone. We got two people out before the fight even started. That's pretty okay. And that dodge there is pretty tough, pretty good. Oh yeah, you can stress the hell out of him. I do not care. There we go, get rid of, get rid of that guy. Nice. Foolish horrors. Lock sarcophagus. Oh, it's trapped. All right, so he got bled. That happens. Let's go see what this fight is. Decorative urn. Oh, good. I mean, we have the medicinal herbs anyway. So this is actually a pretty tough fight for the party that we have. But we'll see how it goes. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, and we get rid of that guy before the initiative ticks down. You know, a lot of the key things of this game are a lot of things that are pretty standard for a lot of strategy games. Limit the amount of actions that your opponents can take. Uh, coordinate your attacks wherever possible. You know, focus fire on mages, you know. If you've ever played any kind of turn-based or tactical strategy, a lot of these things are going to be intuitive to you. But then 
unlike other games where you're just incentivized to do them, in this game you have to do them to have a chance of surviving. If you do not optimize your decisions, you don't have a chance. And that's one of the things I really like about it, is that this game doesn't... It's not... It's not like... I love FTL, but like FTL is very random, right? You have to deal with whatever the random RNG gives you. This game is very hard in a way that can be managed, prepared for, and strategied around. So it doesn't just RNG for the sake of RNGing. It says... Well, we're at a higher level. Are you prepared to deal with crits? Are you prepared to deal with stacking blights? Are you gonna take the risk and have the potential for more payout? So it forces a more tactical play. All right, so let's heal somebody. got our hunger check we gotta hope we don't hit another one before the dungeon ends or we're gonna be in a lot of trouble we had the key so we use that so there's a trap that's an empty room up there We're also running lower on torches. Oh, some fleshy people. It's good. Okay, so let's get some bleeds on these people. Stun him. Give him an extra hit of those bleeds. And I know how much damage these guys can do, so let's give everybody a little top off. Whew. So this guy now has a buff that makes him harder to stun. And that way they make it so that you can sometimes get chain, chain stuns, but it's usually pretty difficult, and they do that to auto-balance the game, so you can't just run a party of four stun characters and just never take damage and slowly grind your way through every single encounter by stunning everyone. Uh, it's a really good balancing mechanism, because otherwise I would totally do that, even though each fight would take me like 20 minutes, because it would mean that I would never take any damage. Yep. Alright, so now this guy's in closer range, so he can be hit by my people because the big body blocker isn't there. So let's start putting some damage on him. Is the weapon that cuts on its own. Be wary. Lock sarcophagus. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzy fall. Right, he's got a bleed, that happens. I'm not concerned with it. So we've got to fight right here. Back, these guys are super bad news. We want them down ASAP. Because Doomsay is a little bit of stress damage to everyone. It's really, really terrible. Yep. Things are getting bad. Alright. 
So let's keep the light level up first things first. We gotta get this guy off the table. Yep, yeah, shoot him. We can't take the risk that I'll get another turn. Let's stun this guy. Yes, yes. Very stressful. Need to get these backline people off the board. Come on, crit. Yeah. Hopefully that'll be enough to finish him when his turn comes up. You need to play a nice song for yourself. I like how the Jester can cheer himself up by playing music, but I guess that makes sense. Yep. This guy should die when his turn comes up. Yep. Slowly, gently. This is how the life is taken. We're running out of space. Okay, so here's the fun part. Now we have to decide what we want to drop. So I like keys, so we're going to get rid of the holy water so that we can get the key. And this emerald's worth 750. Um, we're going to drop the medicinal herbs because we want treasure. Yep. On the road again to get more treasure. Bookshelf. The knowledge within changes the hero forever. Warren's tactician. Nice. We're running low on torches. Luckily, we've only got a handful of rooms. So this one we are going to bail out on unless there's something really cool in the next room. Nope. Two barren rooms means we are out. The great ruins belong to us. All right, let's see what we get. And we will find whatever secrets they So we got the critical dice for the jester. This is really good. Good starting item. Only one person got traits, and it was B. Delivre. I need to rename that character. Somebody talk in the chat so I can start naming these people different names. All right. Let's return to the hamlet. The degeneracy of the hamlet is nothing, I fear. So now we have when the blacksmith. to the condition of surrounding acres. And the guild where we can upgrade our people's Make skills no with money. We will face ever greater threats. Let's see our what our sage coach has for us. Oh, my favorite hero. Let's see what she's got. Known cheat and bloodthirsty. Um, Iron Swan is really good. She's got really good. I mean, we're taking her anyway, because early on, you really can't be choosers in this game. But the uh, Hellion is just like a berserker. But this Iron Swan ability is frontline heroes usually have a hard time attacking backline people. Iron Swan, the Hellion move, does a ton of damage from the front line to the person in the back line on the other team, which makes the Hellion a tank that does a really good job of getting rid of stress damagers. So we'll get her. Rage and Antiquarians increase the loot that you get. Um, and they kind of suck otherwise. Um, but they're, they increase the amount of treasure that's generated. We got another highwayman. They, this game really likes giving us highwaymen. This is a pretty good one. Good starting abilities. Let's get that guy in there. Alright. So. Let's take a look. Alright, so. Some people have still got bad abilities. Right? So. She's got... Nervous. 
which is really bad. So let's go ahead, get her in the sanitarium. Oh, we still can't get her in the sanitarium. But let's get her in Durville into some stress relief at least. And then, um, everybody else is pretty okay. Uh, he could use some. Let's get him in there. And uh, then Tessel, can you go anywhere in here? Perfect. Let's get you in there. And uh, then now we need to build ourselves a new team. Who do we've got available? Well, we've got Renald and Dismas. Ugh. All right. So let's. I'm gonna plan to get rid of some of Renald's negative traits. Um, do we have a healer for this run? Um, kind of, sort of. Um, can we get enough self-healing people to come with us? Maybe. Um, so, if we don't bring a holy person, we could bring face B. Um... Actually, I'm just gonna start giving people silly names. Uh, these guys turn into doggos, so uh, this guy's gonna be Comrade Doggo. There we go. Um, do I want to bother doing upgrades? Not yet. We're gonna wait to see who shakes out a little bit better. We're probably gonna get Cuddle in this because Cuddle at least has some kind of heal. Oh no. Cuddle doesn't have Battlefield Medicine. So let's get Cuddle in there. And let's get Battlefield Medicine on there. And can we upgrade? A strict regimen is paramount if one is to master the brutal arithmetic of combat. Play grenades, a good one to have upgraded. So you see I'm sinking some money into Cuddle here so that we can make Cuddle have better abilities. Okay. Um, so we're going to bring Cuddle. We're going to bring Comrade Doggo. We can't bring any of our holy people. We'll bring the Antiquarian and... We need to get lick wounds on this guy. So let's get this guy and let's get let's rename this guy. And we're gonna name this guy Doggo Comrade. Because he's a friend to a dog. Um and we need to get some cool stuff. All right, so we need to get Lick Wounds, which is the self-heal. So in this game, we don't we're not we don't have the heals, but if we make a party that's all people who can heal themselves, it solves that problem. So we're going to get her up front. We're probably going to get Doggo Comrade in slot 2. These are all good abilities for this row. We're gonna get the antiquarian and then the back. She also has a starting heal. Um, we're not gonna probably use transform at all, so we'll get him into slot three. Um, let's rename her. Um, I don't know. What's a good name for somebody who's all about the money? Uh, Pecunia. There we go. Alright, so let's get some trinkets. Let's pull the trinkets up. And 
Oh, right, we've actually got a Houndmaster, so we can use the Houndmaster whistles. So let's get the Houndmaster whistle on that guy. How's her dodge? Pretty good. She can afford to lose it. Uh, let's go ahead and pick a mission. What do we got? Speed stones, meh. Abomination, plus 15% protection. Uh, that's pretty good. What do we got here? Gambler's Charm, plus 15% max hit points. That's pretty good for a tank. Trap Disarge, Drifter's Buckle. Uh, I think I kind of want this one. Let's do this one. So we got the Pupper Treats. Let's get some torches in there. All right, let's do it, see how we do. Hey, Chris. Not much, man, not much. Just doing some of this of darkest dungeon business. Now, Did I rename her? Oh, I forgot to rename her. Whoops. Doggo Comrade and Comrade Doggo. Love that blockade as the first thing that we come Even across. That's nice. Seems bent on preventing passage. Yeah, Chris, this is a really hard game. Uh, it's just like a RNG and like maximized strategy and like every decision uh, kind of the way is lit. The game is that clear. takes like turn-based strategy we and makes it so that a lot of the things that you have to do in other games to optimize is what you have to do to survive in this game. Um, okay. Let's see if we can get some stuns. Because I really don't want you to take your turn. A decisive pummeling. And you resist the stun. Because of course you do. Um, Iron Swan, hit that guy. Please don't put her in the back row. Phew. We don't have any stress relief in this party, except for self stress relief, which and might end up being a par problem, especially on a longer map. But what's done is done, so. So the dog, the Houndmaster does a lot of bleeds. So you always want the Houndmaster to be attacking people who have flesh, if able, because the bleeds don't do anything to skeletons. Just hoping for a kill there, that was my mistake. I should have focused on the frontline guy. Don't do what I do and focus on... Yeah, we got the Blight, so he should die on his next turn. So he won't get to act. And that guy got a bleed. That's not great. Oh, he didn't quite pass. Okay. Let's get another bleed on this guy. There we go. Uh... These resists. It's an epidemic. Destroy them all. All right, they're both dead. Yep. Death by that was not a super great opening. All right, so that was not a super great opening, but we'll deal. So these minor antiques are the things that the antiquarian gives you the opportunity to get. 
Um, and it's just extra money. All right, so we're gonna change her name. Uh, Chris, you just joined, so we're gonna call this uh, Chrissy. Do that. There you go. Lock sarcophagus. Cool. Um, let's roll. This is not an auspicious start, so you might get to see uh, what happens in this game when I'm forced to make the decision to bail. Yep, we're... Ooh! Mmm! Um... That hurts bad. Frontline person. Almost at 50% stress. And we're on, like, room three. Not great. And of course, this is a 90% room one where we have to go in two completely separate directions. Okay, so let's go ahead and stun the bone for here because we don't want to deal with your nonsense. Um... Get blight on him. Hey, leave, leave, doggo comrade alone. Him and his puppy are just here, seeing the sights. Why is everybody picking on the guy with the dog? I mean, come on. There we go, get that guy out of here. Give them no quarter. Yep, Bone Courtier is gonna go first. As they always go first. Unless you get the surprise round on him. We gotta get some bleeds on this guy. There we go. That, should, that might do it. Um, let's get the stun. Don't crit. How quickly the tide turns. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. This is gonna be snug. So you'll notice that the bone courtier has now moved to the person with the highest strats. So like this is something that's frequently gonna happen. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Alright, so we're gonna get the blight resist on this guy. Um we might have to make camp soon, which is And now the true test. Hold that's fast. really not great. Let's get over to him. We don't have any bandages, so we're gonna have to just try to eat some food to keep them alive until we get into the next room and we can camp. We're having to camp really early, which is super duper unfortunate. Huddled together, furtive and vulnerable, rats in a maze. All right, so we're gonna pile. Uh, we're gonna get rid of the nighttime ambush. We could really use some extra health here. Um, okay, I guess that's it. In radiance, may we find victory. We're not doing great. Um, but finding the stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home.
ambushed by bowling benches. Phew, surprise round. Might end up saving our bacon. Not if my people miss, though. Kill him. Thank you. Alright, please, Mr. Houndmaster, heal your dog. Save the puppers. Come on, stick the stun. Thank you. You just keep doing you. You just keep hugging that dog. I just healed that guy. Come on. So you've noticed in two separate runs, we've had two different people get to the point where they were on death's door, where they have their die rolls to see if they just die. Stress level on Pecunia is Success not great. So clearly and beautiful. Or is it merely a trick of the light? This is gonna be rough. We're probably gonna have to bail before we finish this one. Before. But at least since we have the Antiquarian with us, we're gonna walk away with more treasure for failing than we would have normally. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. If only treasure could staunch the flow. Uh, corruption. We'll get rid of the, her the herbs. No, when you bail, you just bail out of the dungeon, but everybody gets additional stress for having failed. And you don't get the actual quest rewards. Um, put some DOTs on people. Powerful blow. Mm, no crit. I was hoping for it. Attack my tank, thank you. It's always nice when people actually, you know, like, attack my tank. As opposed to all of my other characters. Um, let's get another dot on you. Because you're gonna go first. And you're gonna stress somebody out. Oh my god, magic. Um, let's get another dot on you two. Nice. So all these dots are stacking, so now I'm just piling damage over time onto these characters so that when their turns come up, they're going to be taking more and more damage. She needs a heal, and nobody can really give it to her, so that's somewhat problematic because the, the base level Antiquarian only has a, a one heal, so let's go ahead and pump you up. Because people are coming in because they want to eat your face. Uh, oh, thank God. Gently. 
This is how a life is taken. Let's see if we can get that guy. We do. And I attacked the wrong thing. Rad. Um. So, one of the big things here is you always want heirlooms. They're literally like the primary reason you're here. So, we're going to get rid of the dog biscuits and we're going to make sure that we get those heirlooms because that's the whole reason we're here. It's the reason for the season so we can rebuild our town. Doggo did go after Bowen, so that's very thematic. Okay, so there's nothing there, and we only need to explore 90% of rooms, so we're actually going to start backtracking from here. Because a single curio is not worth the extra stress that we could get. So, just briefly, while we have a second, uh, Comrade Doggo here, who is a abomination. I've been using his base abilities, but when... You shape shift. Um, he go turns into like a giant monster person that has these incredible abilities. However, every turn that he is in monster form, he stresses everyone else around him and himself out. So, shape shifting as a, an abomination is really good if you need to win and he can help you close like a boss fight quickly. It's not really that good as a like rank and file ability that you would use in every fight because it would increase the amount of ambient stretch uh stress that the party would take every single fight so usually i just use his stun chain and his throw up and his self heal oh nice empty chest my favorite game. There's the hunger check. We cannot afford another one, so hopefully we won't get hit with another one. It, so basically, the, every turn that the game goes on, it starts rolling to see if you hit hunger checks. And then the longer it's been since you've been hit a hunger check, the more likely you are to have one. It's kind of like when your inventory is completely full, you have a a base percent chance to see this uh, roaming boss called the Collector. But the more full your inventory is, that chance goes up. So every time you enter a hallway, you have a chance of seeing the Collector if your inventory is full, because he wants your stuff. But I'm sure we'll see him at some point during the course of this player. Fast healer, what a great ability. All right. All right, so these guys are bones, so this is super not rad for this guy, so... We're just going to do his highest damage attack on somebody. Even though the bleed's not going to do anything. And then we're going to try to stun that guy. Good. We do not want that guy getting any turns. Especially as fragile as we all are right now. Okay, we got the middle guy down. Good. Healing Vapors. It's really just like smelling salts. It makes you feel like you're okay, but you're actually dying. Uh, barf. There we go. So his turn's gonna come up and he's gonna die. And then chopping. Chrissy's gonna chop him up. Uh, we're doing okay, so we can afford to kind of draw out this fight and let people heal a little bit. Though, Chrissy's not doing super great. So let's have him heal himself. We'll use this as an excuse to get some heals on him. Get some stress off of him. You're going to heal yourself. Self-heal team. Don't crit. Oh, thank God. Uh, yeah, heal her. And uh, then Chrissy will hopefully finish this guy off. So the good news, the bad, well, the good news is we can put these trinkets directly on people, I believe. Um, we definitely want that because that's worth 1,200. So, 
So we're, since we don't have enough for healing check anyway, we're just going to use that food on Chrissy and get the rare antique into our inventory. Because you need at least uh, four, f oh, I'm sorry, depending on party and like, I think it's uh, either, no, it's six. You need six for a hunger check. We're doing okay on money, though, thus far. Oh, there's the hunger check. No mm. force of will can overcome Tastes good. Body. 20. So, the hunger check came, and she got stressed out. How much of the map do we have left? She's afflicted, so she has a serious stress condition that is going to stress everybody else out. People are at middle health and middle strength, so we are going to bail. I know you'd all love me to press on, but they will likely die if I do that, and that's what this game punishes you for, pressing your luck. So whenever a character hits 100% stress, they have a chance to either get a virtue or an affliction. Uh, there's something like it's something like 65-35, or yeah, 65-35 uh, base, 65 to get an affliction, 35 to get a virtue, and then there's things that can modify it. Torch level, um, what ha else has happened, trinkets that they're carrying, etc. All right, so let's take all the trinkets off of everybody. And that was not super successful. We just basically broke even on that. Um, we gotta get, let's prioritize who's got the worst shit going on right now. Um, well, if I remember correctly, the first and most important thing is our tank needs to not have kleptomania anymore. Um, anybody got a disease? Uh, What do you got going on? Bloodthirsty. Um, I can't really deal with any of that. So let's sort people by stress. Get the top people at the top. Start getting these people some healing. So. Comrade Doggo and Doggo Comrade like cannot go on missions right now. If they went on missions right now, it would basically be like inviting your own death. Um, um, I'm going to save some of these upgrades for now. Um... What's her deal? Love interest. She'll only go to the brothel, which is currently filled with another character. So we just can't use uh, that guy right now. So let's see if we can upgrade the stagecoach anymore. So uh, we've got a lot of these. So let's see if... So now we can get this whole full new party. You will be laughing still at the end. You just really early on want to focus on having a large roster so you can go on missions without doubling down and having to um, use people multiple times because down that way lies madness and death. Um, what do we have as far as an experience party? Uh, we've got Osmond. Um, she could use some upgrading. We've got Dismas. Dismas has got the, the pretty good abilities anyway. Um, Renald's in the, the, the fridge. 
Um, he doesn't have zealous accusation, which is kind of un unreal. Um, who else do we have for the tank slot? Uh, boss art's pretty good. You have to heal. They will always heal health-wise. They will not heal stress except for a little bit if you don't put them in one of the facilities. Um, you have to put them in the facilities to get rid of the things. So the traits are going to start piling up. So what's going to end up happening in this game is that the people who are the most beefed out are going to be the people that have the most things wrong with them and negatively impact your runs the most. So then you have to decide, do you want to invest in fixing them? Because it costs a lot of money to do so, as you saw. And it gets worse the more severe their problems are and the higher level they are. So then if you spend 6,000 gold getting rid of somebody's negative traits, and then they die, that feels really bad, like super duper bad. So you've got to kind of manage whether or not it's worth getting rid of the negative traits off of people. All right, so let's build a party. First things first, let's pick where we're going and we'll build a party and then we'll upgrade people from there. So we've got the new locations going on. So uh, the cove has got like a lot of aquatic and a lot of blight. Um, the weld has like, uh, like a lot of pigmen. And the Warrens, I forget what the Warrens have got going on. And the Ruins are, of course, undead, as I mentioned before. So, what's that? Agility Whistle, we don't need that. What's that? We don't have a Bounty Hunter yet, so that's not really great. What is this? That's not a bad common item. I prefer something better. Man, slim pickings on these items. Um... Let's get the one that's an everybody item. So let's go here. Let's go to the cove. So cove, I usually like to lead, bring a lot of bleeds and a lot of blights. So we're going to bring cuddle with us. Um, this, um, we need a frontliner. Uh, cove adventurer is a good one. So we'll get him in there, and we'll modify him accordingly. And we'll rename him as well. Uh, Dismas is going to be good. So we'll get Dismas for section two. And then we will get Osmond in the back slot. Did we just rebuild the original party? Yeah, we did. Okay, whatever, Vel. Um, all right, so let's go back out to the, the city map now that we have a party. Because then it'll auto-sort our party to the top. And let's start upgrading some people. So, you need Zealous. You, you need it. You gotta have it. Um, we're not gonna upgrade that because you can't use that. Uh... And we're not going to upgrade the other ones because they're not critical needs abilities for our character. So let's get Dismas in there. We'll upgrade his bullet. We'll update his bleed and his grape shot. So we're sinking money into these characters. Um, that's a thing. Um, I usually only on these... I only upgrade the heals. Uh, I'm, I'm far enough ahead. I can, I can justify upgrading judgment. So let's go to the blacksmith. Man, we need more deeds. We need more deeds. Um. What's the ex what's the exchange rate on on this stuff? Whew, six for two. That's pretty brutal. I think we're just gonna have to hold off on it. Oh, good. This is a deed one. So, whoa. Um. Okay. 
get debuff on him. Wow, he's a really bad dodger, huh? We don't really have any good trinkets for this dungeon, but Viacon Dios. Um, here's my thoughts. This guy's got Blight, right? Do we want to just bring him instead of... Yeah, I think we want to... No, we can't bring him instead of Dismas. That's why I didn't bring him, because the holy heroes are in the party. God, that's miserable. Um, let's bring a, a Jester. Let's get another Jester leveled up. Uh, um, hmm. This is where things get tough, where we have to be concerned about a lot of positioning stuff for these characters. Um, let's get uh, Bele in there instead of the Jester actually level him up because he's a Cove Explorer. Um, let's do it. Let's provision it. Uh, Confoss, I currently have uh, Zero Dead and Rainy Day Woman, thank you for joining uh, and thank you for saying hi. I have zero dead currently because it's a brand new playthrough and we're still in like the the game is nice to you portion of the game. Or somewhat nice to you. It lulls you into a false sense of security. We're gonna bring a little extra food just cause I don't want what happened last time to happen this time. Um, let's get a, a quick key in there. All right, uh, let's do some renaming. Uh, Osmond needs a rename so I'm going to rename Osmond rainy day and then we've already got cuddle and let's rename our highwayman here confess So if you haven't already, uh, you can go ahead and follow below, and there's also some links in the bio. Check it out. Uh, I'm going to try to keep doing this with a lot of the different strategy games that I like to play. Um, especially, I'm really excited that the uh, the Crimson Court DLC is going to be dropping soon. So, very excited about that. So this is different than the other missions we've done thus far where we had to explore rooms. This, we have to find all of the fights. We have to fight 100% of... Off to a great start. Um, you, you have to uh, do 100% of the room battles. Good, she dodged that trap. The match is struck. A blazing star right. is born. Oh, it's beginning to look a lot like Fishman everywhere you look all right so let's just start dropping so again uh something i mentioned earlier uh i know how all of these dungeons work and like what type of damage is most effective in all of these settings other people who might be playing this game for the first time do not um so anticipate that when you play this game for yourself it's probably going to be harder um because i know to stack dot's in this area uh, because of the aquatic people, but if this was your first time going into a cove, you'd take whatever party met your fancy and probably get obliterated. So. So, the other thing about the cove is, in the cove, generally speaking, people are re the baddies are really good at focusing on healers. I have noticed. I don't know if that's just my mind and me being crazy. But, let's get some more dots on there. 
because the dots are really effective on this map. Uh, that guy might die, but let's get rid of that guy. Definitely don't want that guy around. Let's get rid of that guy. Hopefully we can get one more hit on the Vestial. Nope. I was hoping to get one more turn with the Vestial so we could get the heals. Giant Oyster. Uh, I could use the shovel on it, but I really don't want to. Alright, so we're hunting for room fights. Um... But there's always going to be one right at the end over here, so we've got to go this way as well. Like, they always... No, I didn't mean to do that. They always do that to you. It's the worst. Oh, these guys are gross. So these guys eventually... Uh, again, uh, hindsight being 2020, these guys eventually blow up and do a ton of damage to you. But before they do that, they don't really do anything. So, one of the first times I ever played through this game, uh, I just was like, oh, that guy doesn't do any damage, he must just be a meat shield. And then they just, like, blow up and execute you. Um, so you gotta get rid of them first. But yeah, let's see what we want. These guys do a lot of DOT damage, so... And they're really resilient to direct damage, so we want to try to get some bleeds on them. Yep, high protection. So they have high protection, but they have very low hit points. So if you can get DOTs on them that get past their armor because they're bleeding out, it's not actually a new attack. It works really well. Anybody, feel free to shout out any questions that you have while we're kind of just playing through here. I'd be more than happy to answer anything. Though I imagine a lot of people are probably familiar with the game. But if you're not, feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Because that's the whole point of me doing a completely fresh playthrough here. It's just kind of to show people the, uh, the, uh, the ropes here. Yeah, there's a, Chris, there's a monster in this game that's just called, like, an undead, what is it? It's like a something centaur, uh, crap. It's like a, a centaur mixed with another animal, mixed with an undead creature, and it has like a what would be a German-esque like hybrid name. Another missile. We'll, we'll come across it. Don't you worry. Wait, does Cuddle have kleptomania? Oh no, curious. So if so, that was a good example of a negative trait coming up where um, a Cuddle there could potentially have just opened something that I had already seen was a trapped because it might come up as like trapped sack and if that's the case okay so now we don't need to continue this way unless we want these curios which we don't because there's a barrier here because there's no more room battles so this doesn't factor into the quest um so we're gonna go back the other way the light Curio are the little objects that are in the little walk spaces that I'm opening. They're referred to as curios. There's all sorts of different items that you can do to either cleanse them so that they're never trapped. Or to, um, you know, enhance the loot that they give you. And there's some that are quest related or can unlock certain roaming bosses and stuff like that. These guys paralyze. They're really not rad. Um, but we need to get rid of the big guys first. So get some bleeds on him. He's not going to get to take a turn, likely. Oh, he dodged it. Good good work. So that one should be good. Uh, but in the meantime, we also need to get rid of this guy. Yeah, we got to get rid of him. Yeah, jellyfish can't bleed last time I checked. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Ooh, a key. Love those. Ugh, that's two empty packs. Alright, so this is a barnacle encrusted chest. So we're gonna put a key in here. And it was a wasted key. Um Wow, a third 
empty. Another loyal devotee. A third empty chest. That's the really, is really not great. Is clear. Hey, Shens. Thank you for following. All right, so this guy blocks the people behind him. Very high protection. We're going to go over him and blight the stressors in the back. And then we're going to have our highwaymen just stack. Mm, of course, the bleed doesn't land. Uh, we want to stun this guy because we don't want him to put his super shield on anybody. All right. Um, judgment. Back row. Need to get that stress caster down. That guy's buffed. Uh, I use X split. A dizzying blow That's not great. Um, I guess that the main stressor is gone. That's good. Let's get the flight grenade. Come on, big money. Oof. Okay, so we need the big heal on our Plague Doctor. Yeah! Alright, so let's just stun him. See if we can get the back-to-back -back stuns. Awesome. Land the bleed. Oof. Okay. Uh, maybe this time. There we go. See, normally that slash does like 12 damage, but with someone as with as high of protection as him, I'm only doing like four. So you really need to be able to land dots damage over time on that guy. Yep. So now, anytime I would attack this guy behind, it's going to go on the front guy anyway. So I'm just going to pile attacks onto him. Hopefully I'll get one more turn with my healer this fight. Uh, so I'm going to actually do the stun so I can try to get another pass with the healers to get some health back on the two of them. Who's highest in the initiative? Perfect. Battlefield medicine. Get some health on there. Oh, and another one? Mmm, delicious. And a crit? Another loyal devotee. Oh, uh, Shenaniganry. Thank you for following. Correct. Damage over time equals dot. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. All right, so uh, we'll keep adventuring. Um, I need to rename this guy, though. This guy's gonna be Shen. In honor of my friend Tim. So, you too can die in real time. Alright, let's get the key in there. Packs laden with loot are often low on supplies. All right, so there's actually nothing, so there's no real reason for us to continue. Unless we're feeling super gutsy and we wanted to double back and go get those curios, but we don't have a shovel, so we're gonna take a lot of stress doing it. So my inkling is gonna be cut the money and run. So we got some good money, we got some good heirlooms, we got some deeds, we got some more deeds here, so that's good. Because we need to update our blacksmith. What did he get? Irrepressible, that's a really good one. So now when he hits his stress maximum, he has a better chance of not going nuts and having a positive thing happen instead. And now everybody in this line is level one instead of level zero. I remember days when the sun shone and laughter could be heard from the tavern. All right, so let's take a look.
Cork removed. Alright. So, love interest. Let's see if the brothel's finally open for Pecunia. Get her in there. Uh, let's get the trinkets off of everybody. So, uh, word to the wise, if you leave trinkets on somebody and somebody has the gambler trait, they have a chance of gambling away your trinket. So make sure you unequip trinkets from people that you're not using. Pro tip. Um, Alright, let's take a look at what our available quests are. And... What do we have? What's that? Minus a solar crown. That's pretty good. That's pretty meh. That's pretty meh. And of course we have the darkest dungeon, which we desperately don't want to go into yet. So we'll take this medium level cleanse mission. Oh yeah, Shens. I had mentioned that I use XSplit. Uh, the white number is how many successful runs I've done. Um, once you hit certain milestones on successful runs, it unlocks the various bosses. Each dungeon area has three separate bosses that you have to beat multiple times. Once at the heroic level, once at the ch uh, legendary level, no, once at the champion level, and once at the legendary level. And then once you beat all of those, you unlock the darkest dungeon. Yeah, it's made by the same company that did Don't Starve. So, how do I fix that, Shens? I'll check into that. Okay, so who do I want to take on this magical journey into the ruins? Well, I want probably either Shens or Rinald. Um, Um, so we'll get Shen in there, um, cause he's holy, so he's gonna do more damage in there. You yearn for adventure, let's see what's, Dipsomania, what's that do? Yeah, I'm just not exactly sure where that is on XSplit. Give me a second. I'll see if I can troubleshoot that real quick. take a look what do, who do we want to have in this who do we want to have in this uh, um, we don't want Dismas because of all the skeletons we can get Cuddle in there and just kind of double down on building up our initial team since they're all currently low stress. Uh, light sensitive is such a bad trait to have. Um, it's brutal. 
Uh, we can get, uh, we can do uh, double tank. Let's get people out and upgrade them. Doggo is not necessarily the best pick for the runes, just because of um, uh, all the the emphasis on bleeds. So let's upgrade weapons. Fan the flames, mold the metal. We are raising an army. So let's do some armor upgrades. So. Let's sort by activity. Let's stop upgrading weapons. Tearing through our cash. So this increases the damage and hit points across the board. So let's go ahead and embark and let's provision. So we're doing a short one. No, it's medium. Two shovels. Bunches of foods. And via con Dios. Let's go. Yeah, I'll look into it between now and the next time I stream, Shens. But thank you for uh, looking out on that. I'll check into that and make sure I do variable output between now and the next time I stream. Must be driven back. And what better place to so we got Shen, we got Renald, noble line. Cuddle, and Rainy Day. So we've got to complete 90% of room battles. So we've got two avenues that we have to travel down. So let's go ahead and get to it. Yeah, you simply must know what's in that stack of books. Thanks. So, let's get some blight on the people on the back. Ugh, look at that nice blight hit. Alright, so she resisted the bleed. That's good. Um, let's smite this guy. Ah, if you resist the stun. But of course, um, good, we gotta kill on that guy. Can't argue with that. Uh, oh, right, we've got two. Let's see if second time's a charm. Nope. Because I don't want that attack, because that one really sucks when it hits everyone, because it does stress damage too. And it does bleed. It does bleed and stress, so it's really. It's not great. Uh. So let's get some bleeds on this guy. Let's focus on killing him instead of stunning him. Leave my healer alone. Come on, man. Yep, here's the full hit. So bleeds on three people and stress on everyone. Not great. Um... Just smite him. Let's do it again. Get him out of here. Yeah, he, he's got it. Alright, so... Heal yourself, please. Thank you. Nice. That's at least a good pull for that. Reasonably hard opening fight. So we're going to keep on rolling. All these bleeds. There he is! Alright, so this game has a lot of auto-balancing features. So we are fighting the Collector. 
Yes, DOT stick around between fights. So the collector has these spectral versions of the different classes, and he wants our stuff, and he is gonna try to kill us. If we s survive this, we might have to bail out, because he's gonna take a ton of our resources. Um, so we need to get him gone, ASAP. Notice how little damage we're doing to him. Uh, and we need to burn these guys down. The more of them he has, the worse it gets for us. Just pile those dots on. I love that this is like our third or fourth run, and we get the Collector, one of the wandering bosses. This is good. Yep, look at that stress. All right. Um, yeah, all right, so just keep cooking. Continually onslaught. Destroy. Yes, thou art judged. Heal yourself, please. Collect call, huh? See what he did there? So I'm actually happy that he did that because it pushed him back into the back row. So he's easier to hit with our DOTs. Yeah, Chris, that's exactly what we're gonna do here with our, our I call this the bill. You know, I'm showing people their bill. This, we're gonna keep putting dots on him. He has a lot of protection. So the more dots we put on him. Oh, oh that was could have been a lot worse. That usually crits. But he's marked. So now if any of his cronies attack him, they're gonna cook him. So we're gonna put a heal on him and get him as much health as we can. Yep. Yeah, three, sir. Three. Uh, let's do it. Alright. So, let's get some more dots on you. Leave my dude alone. No crit there. Cool. Thanks, RNG. Um, and a dodge there. Mmm. Delicious. It's not great. Alright. Throw that play grenade on the guys in the back. That's really not good. Uh, she now has two bleeds on her. Yeah, please get a crit. Nope. That's better than nothing, though. This is what happens when you don't bring bandages, kids. I err on the side of not bringing stuff with me. And this is what happens. I don't have the ability to get rid of all these bleeds. And they're just tearing me apart. He's gone. So unforgiving. Uh, 
We should be good now. Woo! 5,000 gold for defeating the collector. So we're probably... Oh. So we got surprised there, so we got moved out of position. Hopefully we survive this room so we can camp. Come on, crit. Bill, our shopping lists are better than yours. I feel like a lot of times in these early dungeons, the Vestal is mostly just healing herself, but she's the only real good healing option. We haven't had a Witch Doctor come up yet. Witch Doctor is my favorite healer in this game. some bodies move these guys closer to the front where they can be hit more In easily radiance, may we find victory so that that attack that I just used also gives light the so the uh, holy heroes have the ability where they can also improve your light level that should do it for that character uh, so let's go ahead and get a battlefield heal instead of an attack yep there we go this momentum push on to the task's end all right so we're gonna rest a spark without kindling is a goal without hope so let's get some food in there let's have him heal her let's prevent the nighttime ambush so we don't get attacked um in a medium dungeon, you can rest once because you get one fire log. In a long dungeon, you can rest twice. Let's get rid of all these stresses on these people. And let's rest it up. So, I'm going to go over something really quickly. Um, about the nighttime ambush that I keep preventing. So, when you don't do this, and if we have a playthrough where we're doing really well sometime, I'll show you uh, how it works. But, um, the nighttime ambush, basically, if you don't spend some of your camp abilities on test. that, what will end now up happening is you'll get home. attacked in the middle of the night, and your light level, mm, negative effect, your light level will end up being zero, so you'll be taking a ton of stress, and you can't kindle torches during that fight. What does Unquiet Mind do? Cannot meditate. Okay, whatever, Bill. So preventing the nighttime ambush is super duper important, unless you have no choice because you really need to heal people instead of using those abilities. Is there even a room battle out here? If there isn't one, I'm going to be mad. No, there's no room battle out here. So we're going to backtrack, because we just need 100% of room battles, not 100% of unnecessary risks. Mechanical hazards possessed by evil intent. And we've already got this, which significantly improves our dungeon experience thus far. So... We didn't know that this little avenue was a waste until we got down here. Thankfully, we got the the exploration, so it got revealed to us. The way is lit. The path is clear. 
We require only the strength to follow it. All right, so let's move to a new place. So there's gonna be a curio. Oh, a torch. Hell yeah. And then we gotta use Even the shovel to get through that. Seems bent on preventing passage. Hunger check. Get a little bit of health back. Alright, so we'll do the outside loop so we can hit every room without any wasted walkways. Let's go slower to try to see if we detect traps along the way. A handsome reward for a task well performed. Man, this guy in his books. There we go, a room battle. Guys in the back, not what we want to deal with, so let's get some plagues on them. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we how badly we can cook some of these guys. Basically. Well, that's pretty good. That opening clear is pretty good. The other thing that I really like about this game, and why I strongly recommend it for anybody who likes really... Let's put the holy water in there. I can't remember if that actually does anything. Nope. I was wrong. Um, Anti-venom? Nope. Okay. The hero contemplates mortality. Man, you are just... Ra Cuddle is just racking up abilities. Um, so let's keep on... Keep on trucking. Ooh, an alchemy lab. Oh, of course you're going to investigate it automatically. Okay. Gotta love that curious. Alright, so... We got no meat people. So we're just going to throw some blight on the back row. Yep, straight for the healer. Which is, you know, par for the course. These are all skeletons, though, so the um, Crusaders are just going to rip them up. Yep. Executed with impunity. Crusaders have, like, a 15% damage increase against undead. And increased critical chances and all that jazz. Every uh, class has a type of thing that they have like natural bonuses against it's things that you have to kind of discover it's not explicitly stated you just start to notice it the more you play and the more you see how the damage shakes out okay so let's throw some blight on the back row with the witch doctor let's get everybody a heal basically like I'm telling you, man, just showing people the menu. I've played this game uh, in the runes with all four Crusaders, and then just focused on the healing aspects of the Crusader for the back two rows. It can get pretty lulzy. And also sometimes when you're very low on money because you've had back-to-back -back bad runs you will create really wacky parties that don't make sense and just try to get as far as you can. That should do it for the stressor. You're gonna get a... Oh, nope, you didn't get a crit here. Surprising. Oh, but somebody else is gonna come in and get the crit. There's the death door check. Okay. I know one of these guys has got to heal. Uh, here. Let's 
Let's get that guy gone. No, the um the game doesn't dead end. Um there's no way you can actually lose this game. What will happen is is you will have to make runs where you have to be super tactical with like base level people that you barely outfit and just try to get as far as you can and bail out and then fire them instead of trying to heal them and do that. But that only happens if you kind of play badly over multiple runs and take a lot of unnecessary risks. But the whole idea is the game is supposed to be hard. Sometimes you do money runs and you take zero level people into a zero level dungeon with like just torches and no food and just try to collect as much treasure as you can to make us make a profit to support your higher level roster because you're a terrible monster person whose great grandfather turned your huge manor estate into a Cthulhu nightmare and you're just trying to gentrify that shit. Correct. Correct. Exactly. Your machinations spring to life with a singular purpose. Uh, I want that journal page, and I definitely want that bandage. I think we're going to get rid of the holy water, as much as it pains me. Um, what else can we afford to get rid of? Really not much. Um, hmm. We have two of those. Those are really good. We'll get rid of the citrine. The citrine's only worth 250. Too fitty. Uh, yep. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted. I'll go over uh, once we get back in town, like the specific things that this is. So, the two currencies in this game are actual money, or actually the three currencies in this game are money, tri trinkets, and um, heirlooms. The heirlooms correspond to different parts of the manor and being able to restore them. So these uh, portraits, crests, deeds are what I use to rebuild the buildings in the town that enable me to upgrade and heal my people. Money is what I use to actually upgrade my heroes and, air, and the trinkets is what I use to mitigate the RNG. So there's three currencies that you have to deal with simultaneously if you want to do well in this game. And you have to manage them well. Instead of it having all be cash, where people could kind of like min-max immediately, you need a balance of all three to keep you from being able to power level very quickly through one part of the game. You're gonna push me with your tentacle? Yeah. Crusaders really don't want to be in the back row. Oh, but at least he's gonna shoot him, so that's good. Because I'd rather him get shot than just about anybody else. Ugh, stop putting the stressful incantation on my healer, please. Um, so he's now out of position to do the attack that he actually wants to do. So, we gotta move him back. Uh, and she's just gotta do the group heal for now. Like, we gotta... She can deal with being out of position more than he can, because we need his noxious blast. Yeah, you know, seasonal vegetables. There's a great uh, dungeon in here that we haven't gone to yet that has some fine poisonous mushrooms that are sentient and chase you. So that's pretty good. Yeah, see, the Crusader, Renald's in the back row, and because of the way I loaded him out at the beginning of the game, he can literally do nothing in that location. This guy's still out of position, but we don't want to switch places because that'll just put Renald in the back. So we're going to do a battlefield medicine on her just to get her a little bit more health. And then show them the menu. And then now that we're out of combat, we can get everybody back into their proper position. Success and we got so the citrine back. Um, or is it merely we can drop the bandage. The I'm feeling bold. Um, Alright, so we're going to continue adventuring because we want to open this chest and see what's inside of it. And we might continue depending on... Get everybody back in their proper places. More heirlooms, hell yeah. Um, what do we got left? Is there anything cool? 
There's a divider there, which we don't want to deal with. And there's a curio right here. So we'll just go right into this next hallway, and then we'll leave. Oh, cool. Tons of extra stress. Yeah, so this game has a lot of positional strategy where every character has abilities that can be used in all four slots but since all four positions but since you can only have four abilities at a time it's usually beneficial to focus on abilities that are useful in the position that you want them in the whole time so in this case both of my paladins well he actually has one that's in all but let's look at Reynold. Reynold has only abilities that work in the two first two spaces. So if he gets knocked out of... He's super potent, but if he gets knocked out of position, he can't do anything. Yeah, no. The, 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 the inventory management becomes so funny because it's just like, well, I could have this, this health or I could have this one piece of date, jade. But yeah, so let's go ahead and complete the quest and let's see what traits we get. Claim what is ours. So we got some good money. And we got some deeds which we desperately needed. Oh, and everybody got a trait. And we got Shen up to resolve level two and Rainy Day up to resolve level two. So let's see what traits we got. We got Shocker, minus ten stun resist. That's not great. That's a negative. Mankind hater, plus ten damage versus human, and he takes 15% less stress against human. Improved stress reduction. That's a great trait. And Cove Stroucher. I'll take it. That's a good outcome. Alright. So let's see what we can upgrade. So we have a full roster. And we've got some like weird people. So now we can afford to actually start getting a little pickier. Um... We are probably going to want to expand our roster. So let's do some exchange. Let's go to the exchange. And uh, let's see if we can get up to 16. So now we can just get another extra team. Because I want probably want everybody here. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is an occultist. And what a terrible... Guilty conscience is a really bad thing. Because it means when... They have stress breaks from hitting 100. They just, like, go nuts and start reliving past things. So that's a good one. God-fearing's not terrible, um, but I love the Occultist. The Occultist is one of my favorite characters because he has this ability called Weird Const Construction. If you remember, my other healer has this thing where it's, like, 2 to 6. So it's not, like, it doesn't have a high end, but it doesn't have, like, a low end really either. This is 0 to 12 healing, and it has a 59% chance to make the person bleed. So, like, this is, like, RNG personified, because you'll have this thing crit and give people 32 health, right? And no negatives, and then sometimes you'll be in a boss fight, and it'll heal for 0 and give the person bleed. So, it's really kind of this cool RNG of, like, letting some dark magician like Doctor Strange just be like, I think I've got a spell for this. Let's see how it works. Um, but we're going to take probably all of these people. But let's look at them. Grave Robber is a blighter and a uh, ranged person. She's mid and back, usually, that attacks middle targets, as you can see here by the red dots. Uh, another Houndmaster. Houndmasters are pretty solid. And another um, Plague Doctor. You know, we haven't seen a man at arms yet, which is really strange. But let's get everybody. We always get everybody. We accept all comers here at the Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, that's true. It's 100% true. But yeah. So, I think that's where I'm going to call it for tonight. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Uh, I'm going to keep streaming. I'm going to probably try to to stream uh, on a more regular schedule. And I'll make it clear uh, and put it in the bio once I have that date ironed out. But, uh, yeah. And uh, until we see you again, I hope you try out Darkest Dungeon. It's a lot of fun.
and uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care.